there are flatbed scanners, there are fast photo scanners, and then there is camera scanning. No idea what camera scanning is? Then check out this video to get the lowdown. Hi, I'm Amanda Littlecott, the photo organizer, and I'm all about helping you preserve and share your precious photo and video memories without getting overwhelmed. If you're looking to rediscover life's special moments and protect them for future generations, then be sure to subscribe and click that bell to be notified every time I release a new video. I always say that digitally scanning your photos is a great way to share and to keep your printed photos safe. There are specialist flatbed and fast feed photo scanners out there that will do the job. However, there is another option, camera scanning. No idea what it is? Well, in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to the world of camera scanning and what you need to give it a try. What is camera scanning? Camera scanning is most definitely not taking a wobbly picture of an image with your smartphone. But what it is, is using a DSLR camera on a stand with some lights to create an amazing quality image. Why do you need camera scanning? There are three simple reasons as to why you need to look at camera scanning to digitize your photos. Firstly, the flexibility that camera scanning gives you is outstanding. You can digitize photos still in the delicate albums and the size of the image you can digitize is only limited by how big your room is if you want to take it that far. Okay, with a bit of photo stitching once you've captured all the parts. It can do prints, negatives and slides and even 3D memorabilia if you want. The quality is fantastic, especially without the constant cleaning that is needed with the rollers on a fast photo scanner. And once you get the hang of it, the speed, especially versus flatbed for slides and negatives, you are on to a winner. This is the reason why this is what museums use to digitize all of their delicate prints. What do you need? So if you want to try camera scanning yourself, what kit might you need? You might already have some of the gear already. So let's have a quick look at what's the basic kit you will need to be able to try a bit of camera scanning. So obviously the first thing you need when you're doing camera scanning is a DSLR camera. It needs to be at least 24 megapixels and a full frame camera. The next thing you need is a lens. And this is where you don't want to cut corners. You need a macro lens made for close-up photography with a one-to-one -one magnification, it needs to be sharp all the way across the entire image area, and you need a focal length of between 50 and 100 millimeters. I'm using 100 millimeters here. Then you need a copy stand with a base, an arm, and somewhere to attach your camera. Now the height of the arm will determine how big an image you can do, but if you've got something even bigger, you could, there are some nifty tricks in Lightroom where you can connect it back together. Now, the next thing is to think about is some lights. So there's two types of lights depending on what you want to do. So if you're gonna do negatives and slides, you need a backlight. I mean, you could use something as basic as an iPhone or an iPad or just a light box. I use a specialist light box to be able to do slides and negatives, which is just lit from behind lights up. Then if you're gonna do prints, you need some LED panel lights that mount on the base and illuminate the image from above. The other thing that you need to consider is you might wanna get a piece of museum glass, which is stops reflections on reflective media like reflective photos. Then the other bit you might need is some software. So the software I use is Adobe Lightroom Classic. I can tether my camera directly into the software and therefore it takes a picture and it goes straight into Lightroom. If your camera doesn't tether to Adobe Lightroom, you can put a card into your camera, take all your pictures and then transfer it afterwards. Because what you will have to do is you will have to do a bit of cropping and rotating of your images once you've taken all your pictures, because obviously camera scanning is not as intelligent as maybe some of the scanners out there to identify where your image is. But this is the basic kit that you need to be able to start a bit of camera scanning. How does it actually work? When it comes to camera scanning, I will say there is an element of a learning curve. But once you've got your camera set up, setting sorted, and you're sure the lights are right, it can be a case of point and shoot. The camera settings are the key bit, and the settings I use are I capture in a raw file format, I use the maximum resolution for the camera, the f-stop I set to about 8, and the ISO to 100. 
Also, you need to make sure the light is even. By comparing the quality of an image captured on a constant colour surface like your baseboard. And you need to make sure the camera is level. And then you are good to go. What are the drawbacks? So the drawbacks when it comes to camera scanning is it's not exactly portable as say a flatbed. If I had an A4 or an A3 flatbed, I can pick it up, put it in my car and take it to someone's house to do a bit of scanning. To be able to do that with my camera scanning rig is obviously a little bit difficult. And the big challenge when it comes to camera scanning is the rather steep learning curve, especially if you are not a keen photographer. I am still learning and still have some frustrations with some of the images that I take pictures of, but once you've got the hang of it, it is definitely quicker than using a flatbed and you don't have to do that really annoying cleaning all the time. Just take a picture. So there you have it, what exactly camera scanning is. What other ways do you digitise your printed photos? Leave them in the comments below. Are you struggling to actually start organising your photos and videos? Don't know where to start? I have put together a simple, straightforward, quick start guide to organising your photos that's linked in the description below. So click through and I will see you there. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead with a like and a share and don't forget to subscribe. Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.